it was my skin journey that led me to the food journey right. because then it was a matter of like what is going on with me like a blood test pretty much um okay. to figure out what your sensitivities are right. and that's when i found out i should not have dairy i should not have egg and i shouldn't have potatoes i went vegan for three months mm -hmm. and on christmas i had the smallest piece mm -hmm. of curry goat so first of all, things that I've noticed was my menstrual was so much lighter. It's way different. Absolutely. Uh, like night and day. If you are having yeah. painful, <laughs> painful periods, yeah. stop eating meat. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I'm not saying you should be a vegetarian or consume less because yeah. you'll notice the difference yes. the following yes. month. Yes. And the month that you eat a lot, you'll notice the heavier period. Absolutely. Right. This is a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm so excited I can't even introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> what up, everyone? It is Shereen Simon. I am here with Melissa James. Yeah. We are filming. Um, I'm stumbling over my words because this is all excitement for me. Um, we are filming the very first episode of Voices and Vibes in my new podcast studio, Perspective Studio Productions. And Melissa has graced us with her time and her beauty and her presence for the second time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, it, it, it all works out. All yes, works out. yes. Uh, sometimes you go through technical difficulties Yeah. when you're starting a venture or troubleshooting where you start an adventure. And I mean, that's just what I've experienced. And mm -hmm. Melissa has been on the journey with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she's came back. <laughs> And she's bright and she's beautiful in this vibrant jacket. I know. And Great she's bringing thing. all the right energy this is the in real the real center of attention, the jacket. Yeah, oh my girl. Gosh. Listen. Yeah, shout out to my mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, shout out to you for wearing it. That too, but yeah. I wouldn't have got it if it wasn't for true, her. So. True, true, true. Shout yeah. out to mom with her fashion forward <laughs> sense, right? right? Like senses there. She has some pics. Yeah. Some pics. Stop it, stop it. No, no slight shade to the mom a week before Mother's Day. <laughs> It's okay. So we appreciate the jacket moms. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. It's given. Mm -hmm. um, so, Melissa, we decided to chit chat mm -hmm. because you got some changes going on in your life. Yeah. But before you go to your changes, tell the audience what the name of your current business is. Because I don't know mm -hmm. if it's, I mean, I think it's still current as of today. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Like, we'll leave wait, right wait, there. wait. Do you mean, okay. Well, yeah, we, yeah won't, okay. we won't yeah, get yeah, into yeah, semantics. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So Matt, tell the people your name of your business, what you may have seen her for. Okay. So most people would have seen me at farmer's markets doing, selling cheese. And that's <laughs> because my business was, is currently East End Vegan. And nice. East End, I did do a name change to East End Co. just to open it up to see what else I could bring in, such as clothing or other foods. And even though it's always going to be vegan, I just thought it would be worth it to open that up. Yeah. But either way, um, yeah, I am transitioning out of that business, as Shereen knows, and more of my customers know because I've sent out the email, just letting people know that we are closing down. Right. And yeah, I was doing that for almost six years. I did take a bit of a hiatus when I had my daughter right, during right. COVID. And yeah, I started back and it was fine and like... But then I knew I was like, I don't wait, 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 do wait, wait, don't part. rush the process, girl. So, don't rush the process. <laughs> you know, that was what I was doing. And now I'm moving into another position. Well, I'm starting another business, really, right. um, which is the Life Guide, which is more service based. Well, hold on, hold on. And Before we I jump we'll into that there. one. Yeah, but, we'll yeah. get to that one. We'll get to that one. So let's take it back. You yes. said six years. Yes. Yeah, East years. End Vegan. What were you vegan the entire time what made you start east and vegan okay so i started because i knew dairy was really messing me up right so i was like okay well i need to figure out better ways to make food i need to make my own cheese because that's really like my difficulty okay. oat milk almond milk all those other milks were out there so it wasn't like a hard thing to just like transition right but i was also at one point i was drinking like i would have what was it i would ask for dairy free foods at restaurants okay but then I would still want the meat. And then okay. it was like, okay, when I met Sheldon, he was already pescatarian and okay. I was in the process of ready to like giving up, like give up meat and all that sort of stuff. So okay. 
So six years ago, you were eating meat. Or no, no, no. seven years ago. How long Probably ago? Probably about eight years ago. Okay. Because yeah. there was a couple of years there yeah. before you actually started so the business. it was really a transition. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so as we met, I think I was more like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to give up meat altogether. Okay. And then, um, yeah, it just... <laughs> It evolved. But then I was like, okay, I need to be more serious about the dairy side of things because it is really messing me up. I'm always bloated. I don't feel comfortable and it's not worth it anymore. So I started making the cheese because I wanted to sell lasagna during Christmas. But Mm. I was going to do vegan lasagnas. People were really big on the vegan thing at that time. Yeah. So when I started making the lasagna, my dad asked for an order of cheeses so he can give out at his workplace. I was like, oh, okay, I could do that. He's like, can you package it or something? So I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And I went to Dollarama, got some jars, put some stickers on it, and yeah. like, thank you, Merry Christmas. And yeah, that was the start. He's like, you know, you could make this into a product. So I was like, okay, sure. Okay. So then I did my first market in February, and it was really good. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to keep going with this. Yeah. At that same time, I was also on track to do life coaching, okay. and wellness coaching. Okay. But East End Vegan was paying for it. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just focus on this because I can actually make some money with this. And then, yeah, that was the start, six years. But why cheese? Like, one, did you have a love for cheese prior to giving up dairy? I have a love for cheese, but not yeah. a love for cheese. Like, I need charcuterie boards. I need, right. not like that. It was just like, I do like the flavors of cheese. I right. do like there's different flavors of cheese and you could change the food around based on the cheese you choose to use with it. Yeah. But it was more just... I really like cheese and the best cheeses that I've ever had and the best food that I had with cheese had macaroni pie, (laughs) macaroni pie. So it's like at the same time, I've tried vegan cheeses and they were gross. Yeah. Most of the vegan cheeses I've tried were gross. Thank God for markets because you'll find smaller vendors who make vegan cheeses and they're actually decent. Okay. Um, Yeah. So like I found maybe two vendors in all of this time that made cheese also that needed to be cashew free. Um, that's Are a you very allergic common, to I'm allergic to cashews. That's my okay. only allergy. Okay. And a lot of people make cashew cheese yeah. for vegan cheeses. Because I was going to ask, what are the common, because what do you make yours with? Almonds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My son um, has an allergy to nuts. Yeah. So it's interesting that you have an allergy just to cashews, but just you can eat cashews. all other nuts. It's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> it's, it's actually only- probably healthier for you because isn't cashews the fatty, the yes, fatty but one, but like good fat. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. But yeah. For me, it was annoying only because it's like, okay, I'm leaving dairy and everything has dairy. And then I'm going into the vegan side of things, but everything now has cashew cheese. And yeah. so you're like, it's not a huge allergy. It's milder, but I know if I give into it, I'm going to get hives or I'm going to feel like itchy. I'm okay. not going to need an EpiPen, but. It's yeah. still like, I don't want to be uncomfortable. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, okay, I got to make my own thing. And, and it has to taste good. Growing up, were you, because I've had allergies growing up. Mm. I, I'm allergic to dairy, actually. Oh, really? And I outgrew it. Yeah. Okay. Um, But I see the impacts on my body, especially as I'm getting older. Regardless, yeah. Yeah. So growing up, were you allergic to cheeses or no. dairy? No. Not that I know of. So when did you start realizing that dairy was having an impact on your actual body? Well, I didn't I didn't know it was dairy specifically. Okay. But I knew that my body was like off just because like as a woman, you have certain things happen and you're like, oh, this doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't yeah. understand. And I would even say before that, I was working at FedEx and it was a very dusty place. And what started even this whole like more holistic, natural journey would have been so I was working on a line and yeah. we get a lot of boxes and where I was working, there was a lot of dust. I didn't think too much of it. I told them like, hey, there's a lot of dust. Can you guys clean it up? But they didn't do that. So yeah. then the dust came Of course, down. like yeah, why right? would you think they're, they're going to do it for you? Right? <laughs> yeah. So then the boxes started coming down and the, the dust was just blowing up in my face and I had oh, no. this terrible breakout. So like my face was red, it was swollen yeah. and I couldn't go back to work for a few days. And I was just like, well, look, like I'm not yeah. going to. It's embarrassing, right? Because it's your face and like you want to show up a certain way. So I started using an ointment and it was like bringing it down. But then I stayed on the ointment because the doctor never actually said like stop using it. And when I would stop using it, my face would flare up again. So I lost my skin tone. I was pale, like Michael Jackson pale. Yeah, because you're it's the um, your steroid. Yeah, it's the steroids. Yeah. And the drugs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. Well, I had eczema. Yeah. And and 
my whole face would get lighter. My pi- I have pictures of me as a young child right? where I look much lighter than my complexion because of the medicine cream. But yet, what do you do? Because you need it. So you, cause you're, what? yeah. So you're gonna flare up and you're like, I don't want to go outside with the flare up. Yeah. <laughs> I, girl. So anyway, and it, it's crazy because I'm like, this is what a steroid cream does to people. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Like, yes, I'm sure there's some good sides to it, but there has to be a better long term solution. So it was that that made me start to realize like, mm, OK, so this isn't sustainable. I went to a dermatologist and they're like, you can try this other cream. Right. Um, and already I was skeptical because I'm like. Did you see what just happened with this one? So when I looked it up, it said it had less than a 1% link to cancer. And I'm like, I don't care if it's even less Less than than a 1%. If you have to put that on your website, then already it's a red flag. It's like smoking. No shade to the smokers out there. But it's (laughs) it's like smoking cigarettes, right? Like you see, that's like the number one thing where they put the impacts to cancer. But yet you you still do it. Yeah. Then I think something is something something's me. wrong. Something yeah, needs to something change. Wrong. <laughs> What's our priorities right? here when it comes to our health? Yeah. So then I was like, okay, I'm not taking this. And I was reading the ingredients and it said Vaseline. So I was like, okay, let me try Vaseline just by itself. Yeah. Then I was using Vaseline, but I'm like, my skin's so greasy, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, wait, and it's petroleum jelly. It's just a byproduct of oil. Like yeah. the oil we use for everything mechanical. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's. Also, probably not an ideal thing to put on my skin. It's also more of a barrier cream versus it being an actual thing that's absorbed into your skin and moisturizing. Right. But yet in our community, we use it quite frequently. I can't lie. I have a bottle of Vaseline in my bathroom. We all do. And it's like, (laughs) fine. But then it forced me on the journey to find new things. So then there's shea butter. Started using shea butter. It's still pretty thick and heavy. So I was getting like finer bumps. And it was my skin journey that led me to the food journey. Because then it was a matter of like, what? is going on with me internally for me to still be dealing with this skin issue and i've always had like acne my whole life and stuff like that so you have beautiful skin now my skin routine and i eat pretty good um like i eat fairly well but my skin routine really so that's what woke me up to like okay something's going on with my body i started seeing a naturopath at the college because it's cheaper go to the college of naturopathic medicine for all your naturopathic needs especially to start your journey because they're students they're learning so there's a lot of information they just have because they just learned it and it's not to say like other naturopaths aren't good it's just they really want to help you you know yeah yeah they're and they're so eager cuz they're, they're just eager. they're just breaking into the industry right? right yeah and so that taught me a lot about my body because they said to do a it's um like a blood test pretty much um okay. to figure out what your sensitivities are right. and that's when i found out i should not have dairy i should not have egg and i shouldn't have potatoes and there are potatoes. other things that were lower on that cashew is a real allergy but yeah. those are sensitivities so it means your body just takes really long to digest it and it has yeah. other reactions, but not uh, anaphylactic allergies. Reactions. Yeah, so yeah, that's that was it's a little start. scary though. So yeah. even though you, because some people they get this type of knowledge from like their doctors, mm-hmm. right? And you're a mom. I'm a mom. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing you've done allergy tests for your daughter, or you not as yet, no. but she hasn't had a need yeah. to do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and I don't know. I don't. I mean. I, I'm guessing at some point my parents must have done an allergy yeah. test with me to acknowledge the fact that I Probably. have these allergies. Yeah. Um, but I lost my train of thought. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think but as, as a mother, yeah, yeah. But as a mother, like, yeah, I was going to say like you, you find these things. Okay. I got it. Um, as a mom, you find out that your child has these allergies, mm-hmm. but even it sounds like you did it as a young adult. Yeah. I was probably... Yeah, this is, again, like six, seven years ago. No, seven, seven, eight years ago. But did you act on it immediately? So that's where I was going. Because a lot of times we know that there's things that are going on with our body, Mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily act on making the changes because we're comfortable and we like what we're eating, you know. If somebody had told me that I have to stop eating spices. What would you do? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I say the way the melanin <laughs> on my t- in my tongue is made up, I probably couldn't do that. Yeah, no, this is not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So having to like be aware of what you're allergic to, or be aware of what's causing like the root cause of reactions mm-hmm. to your body, um, sometimes it's not easy because it's it's a transition. And yeah. as you'll see, this entire episode we're talking about transitioning. Yeah. For um, real. 
did you act on that? Like, did you immediately start putting things in place to start that transition? Or did it take some time to like really digest that mindset and then action it? I would say yes and no. Only yes, because they put me after they did like an assessment after the allergy test, not allergy test, sensitivities <laughs> test, um, the naturopath worker student I was seeing, they were like, you're going to have to like really go. You're going to have to go on the candida diet because which is like a diet where you're eliminating yeast. And mm. so the idea of eliminating yeast and is not just about like vaginal health, but it's also about like your body. So when you're really bloated, there's a good chance you're yeast. When you're super tired, there's a chance that it's yeast. And yeast is natural in your body, like in your gut. Yeah. But if it overgrows like anything else, yeah. then you have to rebalance your body. So they put me on the candida diet because my skin was one symptom. Sleep, my tiredness was another symptom. Um, recurring yeast infections was another symptom. And yeah. what's the other one? The, the bloating. The bloating was the really big one because yeah. I also was like, I feel like I eat okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it was like, I guess at that time, I probably wasn't eating as good as I probably should. Yeah. So that diet meant no sugars and not even like no carrots. That must no have been beets. hard though. Yeah, it was crazy. So that's and, and not natural. Months. Did you say no beets? Yeah, not even natural sugars. No, no, but you said no beets. Yeah. People don't in, eat beets on a regular basis. No, but it was okay <laughs> for me in a smoothie. And it was like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Because, like, I'm learning these different recipes now yeah. that I learned my sensitivities. Yeah. And so I'm trying to start the transition. But when they said, do the candida diet, yeah. I was like, oh, you're forced to do it. Yeah. But then you learn a lot. So then the transition really got jump started. But then I started bringing things back in my diet during okay. Christmas time. And then I was like, OK, well, I know I should not have dairy. Like, I just know that's the one thing that's really setting everything else off. Yeah. But it was a slow transition. And then I would allow myself to have dairy, like mac pie during Christmas. And of course. All those things. like and Blow up right certain, after yeah, with, like, I, But reactions. I know what I'm going into. Yeah. So, like, I'll be super bloated yeah. or my digestive system will But it was worth every down. bite. But I was like. <laughs> hey, what she look like, bro? Shawty press. Shawty press. Shawty fine. Shawty fine. Yeah. Face car valid. She gonna slay it every time. It, it's gonna be okay a week two weeks but i know what i'm doing to myself like okay. i know it's yeah. different when you just feel like i don't know what's going on yeah versus like okay i'm gonna enjoy this mac pie i'm gonna enjoy it fully yeah and i'll pay for it after that's just it just feels different for me because i'm like hey you're also still meant to live this life yeah and enjoy things that are here so yeah, yeah. that's like if i try to eat a bowl of cereal right now mm -hmm. I will just, my body will shut down. It will re reject it. Cereal? Yeah. Like, what, I can't it drink. Cereal? It's the milk. Oh, okay. So it's, it's the, the dairy. dairy milk. It's the dairy. Switch it's the to like oat or the other? I don't really consume uh, milk. Okay, I, gotcha. I do have um, my coffee. Um, I do have <laughs> evaporated milk, right? Yes, and yes. I do have cream, like Caribbean here. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> condensed milk. I need yeah, my yeah, condensed yeah, milk, yeah. right? I need my evaporated <laughs> milk, right? Um, but, and then like, if I have porridge or anything like that, mm -hmm. I, I definitely consume it. Yeah. But if I try to sit down and eat a bowl of cereal, which I grew up eating cereal, mm -hmm. um, even though I was allergic to milk, I didn't have milk with a lot of things. Yeah. Or like my mom would make banana pancakes. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. did eat a bowl of cereal. Okay. okay. Right. So there was room. Yeah. But yeah. today, if I eat a bowl of cereal today. My body will be reacting by tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. Even it might even it might even be the end of today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It will be like this doesn't belong here, and it'll yeah. be an and I won't see it on my skin. My body will just try to get it out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's more. Do you feel like it's a lactose intolerant thing? Um, I was never told that I was lactose intolerant. I was always just told that I'm allergic to dairy. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I stayed away or my mom kept me away from dairy yeah. as much as possible as a child yeah. um and as a adult i would eat more of it yeah right okay. so i can't say it was like in my diet that much but as an adult you you eat all kind and i love a cheese you eat whatever yeah, yeah i know i know and then they I inject the pizza. cheese with the with, I don't love pizza. I, that is I'm one I do not bread love. Bread and cheese. I'm a bread and cheese person. Oh, fresh bread. Yeah, perfect. Oh. Cheese on bread, amazing. Butter on bread. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yes, like yes. I, that's just I don't know. I don't, yeah. I went to Moxie's yesterday, and they have that bread with um. It is a cheese, but it's not. 
what is that cheese? It's not a ricotta. It's some kind of cheese Like dip. a spreadable cheese dip? Yes, yes. The spinach and cheese dip? That no. Oh. I can't remember. It's a white cheese, and it has like, I have it all the time. It's Brie? No. Don't make me pull up the menu. I know. I, <laughs> I, I got... And it's not cottage cheese. Is it cottage cheese? It's not cottage cheese. Feta? No, because... Is it feta? <laughs> I'm ready to guess It everything. might be feta. No, it's not feta because feta is more... Crumbly, but... Yeah, it's not feta. Whatever it is. I'll tell you yeah, what... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just dip it with that bread and the tomatoes. Mascarpone? Okay, you too, you're too you deep with the cheese. I don't even like, know what that cheese is. Okay, I was just like, ah, this is... This you, this you can't be a cheese connoisseur <laughs> over here. And I'm like, I don't even know what that it's, cheese is. You know what the joke is? So I've allowed myself to like try new cheeses just yeah. a little bit because they're also more expensive. So yeah, and, like, but the more expensive there. ones taste really they, good. Yeah. And like, I also realized wine makes a difference. With Girl, cheese. I was just going to talk about pairing. Once you start pairing... You're not, but did you notice, for me, yes. I'm not as bloated drinking wine. Yeah. The allergies don't kick in drinking wine and cheese. The combo yeah. doesn't have the impact on my body. That's interesting. The same way everything else by itself. Like wine by itself, I'm like, oh, why did I drink wine? And yeah. then cheese by itself, why did I do that? But when I pair them together. Right. Something's I'm canceling shocked. out the other. Yeah. And I, I'm That's like, there, weird. Must be, there must be history behind this. Because yeah. if you think, I guess the French did this and like. Other cultures may have this pairing already. So yeah. I want to look into it. Oh, but I know that wine apparently cuts the fat in cheese. But the reason I'm interested that the funny, because doesn't wine have uh, yeast in it? Well, that's it. And on the Candida diet, they told me not to have that. Any all. wine, but yeah. But then I got, once I rebalanced, because they tell you to cut out these things. So then you take supplements to also make sure that you're getting rid of the Candida altogether. Yeah. Then you rebuild. So okay. part of the process is rebuilding your gut flora. So that's like your gut bacteria yeah. so that it's now in balance and you can eat. But okay. not you're not going to go crazy again because you know yourself. You know how susceptible your body is just a little bit. Yeah. And you start figuring out what works. And because you do something so drastic, yeah. one thing I recommend is go on a special diet for people who are like, I could never go vegan yeah. or I can never do this type of food or this type of diet. Just do it even for a week or or like two weeks yeah because you learn so much about food, your body you learn about your body and you start to realize oh wait a minute this just doesn't work for me yeah like something healthy like amaranth which is like a amaranth. green okay. and i only looked into it because i was me and sheldon were like let's do a, a cleanse a reset and they said amaranth is a good grain to blah 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 i've but never even heard it, of this grain <laughs> when you start doing this you start learning there's a lot of grains that okay, you can eat that you right? can eat yeah and so this thing called amaranth and I was like, it's just not sitting in my stomach right. Mm -hmm. And it's like... How it's, does it taste? It tastes a little bit nutty. Almost like a smaller quinoa. Okay. Yeah. So it's... A, yeah, that's the closest thing I would say. But it just wasn't working. Like my body... I could working. feel it. It was like... It was like, this isn't for me. Meaning your body's rejecting it? Or meaning from a taste-wise or texture-wise or all it, of the above? Taste wise, it was just whatever. Like, I could stomach it. But yeah. To me, it was my body saying, like, it was like feeling funny. Okay. So my stomach was like, eh, I don't really know about this. And yeah. I was already having good enough food that something else that's good shouldn't give me the trouble. So it's yeah. just like those subtle hints are what you're supposed to listen to. Yeah. You have to listen to that. That helps with transition. That helped me transition into veganism when I was like full vegan. Yeah. Um, that helped me transition out of veganism. <laughs> When I became vegetarian, and that happened during pregnancy. Yeah. The thing about um, when you're trying these new things is also to kind of understand what their root base is. Mm -hmm. Because I'm hypersensitive to nuts uh, only because I have a child that's anaphylactic. Yeah. Or my son is anaphylactic, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm aware of it. I can eat it. We try not to eat it in the household. Um, although I've made a lot of recipes with <laughs> your spread. Um but I am very conscious about cross um, cross contamination. Cross contamination. Yeah. But even you saying that it tasted a little nutty, mm -hmm. right? It might derive from like, right? Yeah. But um, like, can you have quinoa? Can he have quinoa? I I don't know. But he's also a picky eater, so okay, it's not okay. like he would try it anyways. Now, yeah, 
I have never made quinoa, um, okay. but I've had some really good quinoa as of late. Yeah. Right. And to me, I think it might have to do with like, I guess the seasoning. To me, everything probably comes down to the seasoning. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. I would yeah. not eat tofu in the start of my vegan journey yeah. unless it was like made by like whoever I'm buying food from. Okay. But it took years for me to be like, oh, this is what I can do with tofu. This right. is what I can make. Oh, I could possibly fry it like this. Like, so it took time even to get used to a lot of the staple vegan foods. And right. Yeah. But eventually you start realizing it is, well, not eventually, it is seasoning. Yeah. And it, it, I'm not going to lie, a lot of like, white vegan food and i say white vegan food because it's like american style vegan food or a lot of places owned by white people who produce food it wasn't it didn't have flavor for me it was yeah. very um it was very typical like it was it might be a burger joint with fries and it's like okay you can't really mess up fries but like the burger flavor just didn't work. And this was before like Beyond Meat and all those like newer ones. Yeah. And then it was like, but you don't want to eat a burger. You want they weren't, real food. Yeah, they weren't seasoning it. Yeah. I wanted to try um, being vegan. I want to try it. Mm -hmm. So I've always been quite health conscious on what we eat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's always things being put in your food. Yeah. Right. So. Um, even before they were putting things in the food, before the seeds went away, yes. before the seeds went away, there were seeds when we were growing there up. There were seeds. There were seeds. Before yeah. the seeds went away, um, I would try all kinds of things. Yeah. We were definitely having, um, I've done the almond milks at home, the coconut milks, all of that um, for myself. And my kids were not on it. My <laughs> daughter eventually went vegan okay. and then changed. Yeah. But um, prior to them, I was on the pat paddy wagon before anybody in the yeah, house yeah, was. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, let me try going vegan for three months. Yeah. And my reward, my reward for going vegan would be on Christmas, I could yeah, eat some yeah, a curry goat yeah, a because I was vegan. You know, <laughs> it didn't make any sense, but I could go vegan. I went vegan for three months. Mm -hmm. And on Christmas, I had the smallest piece mm -hmm. of curry goat. So first of all, things that I've noticed was my menstrual was so much lighter. It's way different absolutely like night and day if you are having yeah. painful painful periods yeah. stop eating meat mm -hmm. right and and i'm not saying you should be a vegetarian or consume less because yeah. you'll notice the difference yes. the following yes. month yes and the month that you eat a lot you'll notice the heavier period absolutely right this is a fact yeah yeah, yeah it's a fact. so okay so i have like i'm vegan i'm being very careful yeah um, the period was my biggest noticeable change with my body. Mm. Excuse me, sorry. I can't remember. I suffer from migraines sometimes, um, but I can't remember if my migraines subsided. Okay. I can't really remember that. It's true. Whatever stands out to you, that'll be the thing. Because for some yeah. people, they'll be like, oh, I, was not, I wasn't tired. My energy is so yeah. different. And I'm like, that's great. I didn't experience that. Okay. I don't know why, but I just yeah. didn't experience energy, an energy shift. Okay. I don't know if it was because I was on the candida diet and that changed mm. things. But I didn't notice that, but I did notice the menstrual cycle for sure. Yeah. And the bloating was my big thing. Yeah. Did you, before you went on the vegan, uh, you went into your vegan journey and you were on the candida diet, um, did you lose weight because of that diet? I did lose weight because, of, oh my gosh. It wasn't even a bad skinny. It was just like, this was fast. Yeah. But, so now what is changing in my life, it's sugar that is now my worst enemy. <laughs> right. So I guess this is just aging. Yeah. Sugar is now my worst enemy. Gluten is also something that like I should take it down. Mm -hmm. I can have bread here and there, but it's not an intolerance or sorry, it's not a celiac situation. It's not yeah. that serious. But yeah. I these are two things I just need to monitor a lot more. Mm -hmm. And it's just... I'm just noticing certain things when I have things that are super sweet and I love desserts. Yeah. So it's more. Glow all summer long with natural cold press oils that moisturize and emphasize your natural beauty. Let the sun show off your healthy skin. Shop now on blackfriend.com. Dairy isn't doing what it used to the same way. So my body is changing. I'm changing. Yeah. But sugar is something that I should minimize. And now I've gluten-free bread. It's, it's not great, but it works enough for me. And to still be able to enjoy yeah, something. Yeah, but there's now. also so much other things that I've learned, which is just I can cook better now. Like I've given myself time to learn a bit 
more about cooking and yeah clearly you know, i have to take care of my family so <laughs> yeah and plus when you have a child you kind of want to give them more organic healthier food yeah. and so you tend to if you're that mom you tend to start making things a more, lot yeah, right that's true yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, what when i was vegan for the three months what i that's when i realized there's really nothing different between vegan and eating meat besides seasoning mm. Because, Why do you say that? Because a lot of people will disagree. Because <laughs> then they don't season their food. Mm-hmm. That's true. No, 100%. Yeah, because to yeah. me, because I was actually cooking for my kids, like yeah. my household, and they were still eating meat. Yeah. So I could be making curry chicken, and then I could be make I could make chana, curry chana, yeah. and so the seasoning is the same. Delicious. The difference is the meat, right? I could, any, anything Absolutely. I made, and because I was legit making one for the household, one for me. Yeah. The rice is the same. That's fine, mm-hmm. right? But anything I did, any I, I tree dashes over here, right? And I, tree dashes over yeah, here, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. to me, you know, it was easy. Yeah. No, absolutely. And for me, the transition happened after giving birth. Yeah. Because like I would cook food, and like yeah. you, for me, it was a this was good, this was okay, this was good, this was yeah. okay. But then I was like, let me try recipes so I can actually learn. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, I don't use that much dairy in the first place. So I'm not just adding cheese to everything. Yeah. So it was like, it just has to taste good. Yes. And then you find your key seasoning that are going to make everything taste good. So like, <laughs> right once now, you find those keys. We are out of our staple seasoning at home. Nothing what is, is ta- Nothing is tasting good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nothing is. Well, yeah, hold what's on. Your staple? I, I do eat meat now again. Okay, I bought a barbecue enough. and that's where the journey ended. Yeah, yeah. But uh, all right, <laughs> transitioned to after vegan, I transitioned to vegetarian for about okay, two okay. years. And then I bought a brand new barbecue okay. and I was like, it's over. Yeah, we no, are having barbecue and chicken. And the barbecue is something different. Yeah, the summer I will know. the summer will do you in yeah, every single no, I time. I agree. With you. Be a vegetarian throughout the winter, <laughs> and then be vegan throughout the winter in the yep. summertime. Indulge. Yeah. Well, we're pescatarian when we travel. See, so and when we're overseas, when we're anywhere but home? Toronto and here, yeah. we're like, yeah, we're gonna have seafood. Yeah, because hell it's yes. like fresher. It's better. Yes. It just it's definitely different. Even yeah. the meat is different. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's just we we're like, oh, yeah, seafood's yeah. enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I can't even argue. Well, I mean, I like every. I don't. Well, I don't eat pork, but um, I just feel like if and my staple seasoning to answer your question, it's one that has like no salt. No, I can't remember the name of it. It's a big bottle. And I think it has like a roasted garlic. I will is it from Costco's. No. I Where can't... do you get it from? It's in almost every grocery store, okay. but it's, it's obviously in the in the international aisle. Mm. Yeah, it's in the Caribbean aisle. Maggie? No. I what is the brand? I don't. I will take a picture. I will add yeah, it to this and episode. A, you said it's roasted. I think it has roasted garlic. Okay. I think huh. it, but it's a mixture of seasonings. Yeah, usually it is. Yeah. That's so the... so you know how you can buy a brand, whatever the brand is, and they have like. Meat seasoning, yes. um, garlic seasoning, whatever seasoning, curry yeah. seasoning. Although I don't play with all the my curries are my. If you it's know not, what curry you're using, you do not mess. I don't play with no. The listen, curry. I <laughs> I learned this the hard way making the patty crust crackers. Yeah, you don't. I don't. You don't curries, play curries. You find the best curry and you use that curry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To me, Chief still has the best curry. Girl, I was just going to say Chief has the best curry. Chief has the best curry. Like, and for me, I like the duck. Chief oh, curry. The, okay, okay. Like so, there's the regular one, but yeah. then there's the the duck one is more spicy, and to me, I mix okay, those okay, two. Gotcha. But the duck needs to be in any. Then. Yeah, because it's I spicier. Use the, the chief curry curry. Yeah, but I also use the Kala brand. It says Kala brand, but okay. it's actually chief. Okay, okay. And it's the Madras curry. Those two. Yeah, is that no it, that's not the one in the and red? Then curry herb. Is that which those one are all the, under chief? What's the one in the red bottle? I can't remember the name of the. There's one that's in a red. It has red writing on it. No, no, no. There's another one that's in a red bottle that I also have that I also use. But the chief, just chief, buy yeah. your chief package. Just buy chief. They they know their curries. Yes. I don't think you can go wrong with any of this. You products, cannot. So, yeah. And and for me, like I said, I I cook with the duck one because it's yeah. a spicy. I cook with both. I'm gonna try because I have some yeah. at home. Yeah. 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 Mix them, gal. Put a little some of this in there. And, and I'm you, like, yeah, your I oil guess I need and to have roti. But yes. you know what's funny? Sheldon 
is over roti because when we lived with my parents yeah that's all they would, got yeah like and it's not like they're always making it yeah. but they would bring it pretty frequently so yeah. i'm like okay fine so yeah. i don't make it as often anymore but but hold on you could clap a roti huh? you could clap a roti what do you mean you can make a roti no I'm not I, oh, oh, I make oh. the chana and I oh. buy everything else. Okay, yeah, okay. I was going to say, will we come it no, over? No, no, no. <laughs> that is a goal. That yes. is actually on my bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> my bucket list. That's a plan. I okay. Really, and I need a tawa, though. I yes. I have one. Yeah. So well, you can problem. head to Trinidad. And... I can't go all the way just for that. Yes, you can. Or can. you can. I'm sure you can get it in the West Indian Probably. store. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Or the Chinese markets. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. they have everything. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I don't know where we were going there. But okay, so we go back to your journey. So you've gone through the candid. You am I saying that? The which one? The diet. What candida. Was, candida. Yeah. You've gone through the candida diet. Mm-hmm. You've transitioned over to veganism. Yes. Is business booming with East End Vegan? Because I feel like a lot of people know your brand in mm-hmm. Toronto, at least in the East End. I know. I <laughs> I agree with that because mm-hmm. I I've been surprised where I meet people and they're like. Wait, I know you from somewhere. You're like East End vegan or something, or like you sell something. Yeah, and I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Does wild. it feel awkward when someone comes up to you and be like, I know you? <laughs> sometimes I'm not yeah. gonna lie, because sometimes I'm not in the moment really. Like I'm thinking about something else, and a person just like, hey, your thing. I'm like, wait, now I gotta switch modes so that I can be like, oh yeah, let me be present with you and recognize, <laughs> yeah, I am the owner of East End Vegan. That's so awesome. it's really interesting. Um, honestly, that's because I went to so many markets. That's because I have made myself so visible. Right. And I realize in building a business, you need to be visible. Yeah. As much as like you want to be online. And there's obviously a lot of people who are teaching you how to start an online business, but they're not telling you anything about being in people's visible. faces. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they do it. That's really good. Well, I know they use a lot of ads, but... To me, apart from the digital world, people want to know who you are. They want to know the person behind the brand. And that's what allowed East End Vegan to be so successful. Like, that's what allowed it to be really good. Yeah. So we were really, I was shocked when I looked at the numbers. Because it's one thing being the person doing everything. It's yeah. another thing when you're looking at the numbers and seeing like, yeah, we really we really doubled each year. Yeah. And that was a really good thing. So I was just, yeah. I'm telling you, it was shock. But it was also being present. Right. Going out, going to markets, see people, let them try. If people didn't yeah. try, it's it's very different. Yeah. yeah. But is it okay? So hold on. How do you deal with people trying and not liking the product? Has that? Oh, I'm, I'm like that's I'm, that's fine too. Yeah. Like at first, the very first time it happened, I feel like I was just like, oh, okay, get away from my table. Yeah. No, <laughs> you literally want to tell them like, well, everybody else doesn't yeah. agree. Yeah. Like, you, you're everybody nobody. else likes no, it. Okay. <laughs> right? Like you just want to be mad. But it's like, yeah. I'm also not a person who's confrontational like that. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, no problem. I wouldn't want you to buy it and waste it. Yeah. Like that's my, that had. Become... I wouldn't want you to touch another one of my samples. Yeah. Beat it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because we you don't need to know anything else. Yeah, yeah. And like, if you come with your mindset that you're not going to enjoy this, then w- yeah. why bother? Like, yeah. to me, there's like, a, even though I'm putting myself out there. So that people can try this product. Mm -hmm. If you already have your mind up that you're not into vegan products or you don't even want to get involved, Mm -hmm. don't bother approaching the table because like it's not really purposeful for anyone. But I I disagree. I feel like approach the table so you because you might change somebody's mind. Right. Which I have many times. But I mean, like if you're I'm talking about the people who are set, who's like, "Ah, I don't do vegan stuff. Yeah. So they're not going to try it either. Yeah. So it's like just it's better that you don't bother because the energy they bring to the table is something that you're just like, why did you why did you (laughs) want money in my space? Yeah. Yeah. And like, this isn't like a regular person. This yeah. is like maybe less than five percent of the people who approach the table are yeah. really in a mode of they want to antagonize someone they don't agree with their yeah. beliefs. Yeah. And so it's like those kind of people. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But the people who will come to the table and they're like, I don't know about vegan stuff, but I'm willing to try it. I'm like, hey, that's the person I want to talk to because you should be willing to try things. And yeah. then I that's where I got a lot of customers saying oh my gosh, I need to show this to this person and show this person because I was shocked. I can't believe it's vegan. And yeah. I love that because you should come to come to life with that openness. Like, mm-hmm. be open to trying new things. Absolutely. But also don't come with the intention of trying to 
antagonize another person that's just weird behavior yeah and so that's why i say that percentage of people who are like oh i don't do vegan ah, and i'm like it it what is the purpose then right. like what what were you hoping to gain from our interaction nothing positive exactly nothing so positive. that's why i say <laughs> nothing po- so but some people are like that 95 percent so. of the people yeah. who come to the table even if they're not vegan a lot are not vegan who are not vegan or who are just not sure or like questioning everything, they are still a positive interaction because we can just talk as people yeah. who are people like, yeah, this is what I do. And then there's a respect level for you showing up. There's a respect level I have for them showing up to my table. Yeah. So it's like, it's just nice being at markets because you see there's really real people out there. And that 5% is so small that you shouldn't color your whole day or color your whole experience of business with those people who are ready to antagonize. Right. Which is what people do in life also, which is we focus on that 5% of people who are really just not in the space to even communicate and talk to people. Yeah. But really, we should focus on the people who really do show up and just appreciate bring, the brand, appreciate the brand or just appreciate that you're willing to do something that you believe in, yeah. you know? So, yeah. And also it gives them options because yeah. being a vegan before mm-hmm. didn't have a lot of options. Mm-hmm. And so now this is giving options. And yes. so you have had how many flavors in, in total yeah. versus like where you're at now? Um, well, six flavors in total. Okay. So it's yeah. always been and we six. Sell, yeah. Okay. Well, we started with two okay. and that was the original and the spicy. Mm-hmm. And then we went to... Then we added dill, mm-hmm. oregano, basil, and jerk, I think it was. Okay. And then from there, so we're now at five, and then we added sambal. Okay. Yeah. And so which one's your top selling? <sighs> That's hard to say. Okay, so it's- Based on the numbers. Based I know, on the numbers. I know. Yeah. You know what's funny? Original is still top selling based on wow. the numbers. I know, but it's because it's most versatile. Okay. But the reason I'm saying like, well, it started as oregano, basil, mm-hmm. and spicy- and then it transitioned into jerk and really? spicy and original. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and I'm just like, okay. All okay. Right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> and so it's been a successful mm-hmm. seven, six years? Six years. Six yes. years, yeah. right? And how was your bounce back after COVID? Because COVID yeah. obviously impacted businesses, <laughs> yes. right? There's no more markets. Um, it's strictly online. Very strict. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say the bounce back was slow. I, but I would have to say it was also a bit because of me. Right. Because I have a daughter now. Wait, wait, didn't you? Yeah. So when did you have your daughter? One year before COVID? Like right before? during COVID. During COVID. Okay. I remember you shutting down. That wasn't last year. So it was 2022. Sorry. 2020 COVID started. Right. But I still had things lined up for that year. Right. They started opening things in the summer. So 2020 was still a good year business wise. Okay. Even though I think a lot of the markets died down. Okay. So it was just kind of like, okay to manage this period of time it was 2021 where i had my daughter and i was really like i'm not doing anything related to this business so i found a part-time and then it was 2020 oh you got an actual part-time job yeah but it was like a remote job okay like i could do it from home yeah yeah yeah. okay Um, and i was working very little hours like very little did you feel how did it feel to have a part-time job outside from the business altogether oh it's not a big deal no no because it was like interesting when you were doing East End Vegan prior to COVID, it has it been a hundred percent full time? No, I, yeah, like a full time job. You didn't need another. Forget your husband. Yes, except um, I think it was my second year. I decided yeah. to do work at. I started working at Apple. Okay, and it was part time working yeah. at Apple, so that was good because that was still a building year. Yeah, and then I think I didn't have the time. I was like, I really have to just focus on this. Especially because yeah. summertime, it's just too busy to, yeah. like, be able to do other things. Yeah. Plus, you're going to all kinds of markets. Like, yeah, that's when you're really outside. I'm outside yeah. all the time. So okay. I'm seeing a lot of people, but yeah. I'm also selling a lot more. So the volume's there to sustain me. Yeah. But it was just, it's COVID that I was like, yikes, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I don't want to, I could start production, but I'm also like, well, people don't shop online as easily. Yeah. I can't really get new customers through my product that I sell at markets. That was another thing that I learned in the process of building a business, which is like, you have to figure out how to get new customers if you're not in their face. 
How yeah. are you going to sell this to people who are hesitant or who are interested but need that extra push? Mm-hmm. And those were things like I just had to teach myself. Yeah. But I still feel like I haven't fully grasped exactly doing that without an ad. So it's right. like you really have to use ads. You have to market. You have to market. And you yeah. have to like do a lot of collaborations. It's it's all marketing. Yeah. It's all marketing. But, but that's not my expertise. Right. Right. So it's just I'm th- going to learn along the way. <laughs> and so markets were really your main driver. Mm. That's crazy. Huge. But. Did you like being in markets? Mm, yeah. Most times. Yeah. Honestly. I loved markets up until when I came back and I felt like this is where I guess this was the opening of like, no, Mel, something's really changed. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, I feel a lot more anxiousness going back to markets. I feel like a little bit more pressure for some reason. And I'm not bringing the same energy as before, the excited energy that I used to have. So it was just like after giving birth and just spending that time with Phoenix, something changed like I couldn't say exactly what it was maybe it was just me feeling a sense of like this is no longer what I want to do so yeah it was now markets are okay though yeah no she wasn't because she's still so young well yeah um but like now it's weird because in the last year I was like all right I can do markets it's fine but I still felt that like I don't want to do this anymore yeah like it's I'm no longer in this space anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's so. a change. Yeah. Okay, so you have something plaguing you. Yeah. Something's gnawing at you, Heavy. the back of your mind. Yes. And how do you identify for certain? And maybe, I don't know if you're for certain. Mm-hmm. How do you identify, even though you had said it before that you were supposed to start, but you put it on the back burner. Yeah. But how, like, was there any question in your mind that it's this new venture it's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's what, it's my calling. Mm-hmm. Would you say it's all of those things or am I just? No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I feel like this is definitely my calling. I've always had like. So what is it? Just so everybody knows what okay. it is again. Yeah. So as I was saying earlier, it's I'm, I consider myself a life guide, if anything. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm, co- I'm certified as a coach, mm-hmm. I feel like the work I'll be doing and I'm going into is more just guiding people on the journey because I can do readings and I can like support them as a coach but I also I don't know it's just like a intuitive insight I have Mm -hmm. when it comes to people and like I tell Sheldon this all the time like Sheldon I don't need to know a person long to read everything about them and it's not like I'm trying to get into their brain or get into their mind it's just like I have a really good reading of people and it's just so it's just I like I can't describe that so I'm Mm -hmm. like well, if that's just a talent that you have, Mel, maybe this is why you should really continue the life coaching thing. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, my goal was always to help people, was always to help see people learn about themselves, like learn your power, know what you're really here for. Because yeah. then the stress we deal with every day, the worries we deal with every day would what's the word it will go down just a it's little like bit. suppress a bit. suppress yeah. yeah it'll be more suppressed but eventually it will not get even suppressed just kind of like dissolve I away i want to say subsidize thing. and that's not the word no no no, will, no 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 <laughs> but it's like, probably like like so. it will dissipate like it will go yes, away right exactly. because it's not suppressed because we're not suppressing, it's not suppressing it it's not suppressing yeah. it it's more like it'll kind of dissolve we'll away yeah it'll be gone yeah and, because um, you're passionate about whatever you're doing yeah, yeah. and so that was like Mel, you were already here. Like, mm-hmm. this is like gnawing at you. And you're. I'm looking around. I'm seeing things. I'm meeting people. And I'm like, I wish I could. I wish I could just. I, w- I wish people knew. And it's like, <laughs> so Mel, just go into it. Like, yeah. figure out a way to make it work for you. And yeah. even now, I know I'm still figuring out. So I'm very thankful for the support from Sheldon. But it's just like, what exactly do I need to do to help people understand the importance of self-discovery? Right. I that's probably the the question that bothers me most only because it's like the baseline for being able to even get clients yeah. people have to understand why this is needed for them why yeah. it's important and it's all about personal power so yeah yeah so how do you get started how do you break in because there are there's a lot of coaches out there but I actually believe that just because there's a lot that doesn't mean too much because people will resonate with who, like people will find who resonates with yeah, them yeah. right it took me a long time to find more like a business coach than anything um or a mentor or something like that I never yeah. really had that 
but who you choose to resonate might have to like your ta- your target demographic mm-hmm. will resonate with you for yeah. a different reason than they'll resonate with somebody else. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah, so how are you breaking into this industry? So, content. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I've um, seen you on TikTok more though. I I do both. So, yeah. it's interesting. I decide to focus on coffee. I also do makeup artistry. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. <laughs> Which is so interesting. Yeah, I did see it's that. It's something I that I you... picked up yeah. last year yeah. just as a result of like wanting to support my mom, wanting to help my friends. Um like so that I can support them in like doing a bridal party or whatever. Yeah. So, but I like it. Like it's creative for me. But the life guidance stuff is like purposeful work for me. Okay. So it's kind of a weird position to be in where you're like, I want people to know I'm a makeup artist, but I want people to know me as a life guide. And yeah. it's like people have a hard time processing more than one thing at yeah. a time. Um, but with like Especially TikTok, especially because you're transitioning from East End Vegan. Yeah. And you've been known for East for End that. Vegan. So you'll have yes. people going, Oh, well, she, she ain't doing that no more. She now she doing the life thing, but every once in a while she just do the makeup, so I'm not sure. Yeah, no, right. Had, so and you know what's funny? That's been my whole life. Yeah. Like my friends have always Wait, said what's to your me, sign? Gemini. Okay, I can't so, necessarily stick to one. <laughs> that's okay. That's a, so are you um, May Gemini or are you June Gemini? May Gemini, very different from a what, June Gemini. The end of May? Yeah. Well, no, I'm on the cusp of Taurus too. So I'm May 22nd. 20? Okay. Yeah, my okay. birthday's coming up. But you did cuss, baby. Those cuss babies. The 22nd. Those, so she got like the dual personality. And the power of two. And yeah. The and, two. <laughs> and then, and, two and then you and got the, the bull of the Taurus. Yeah. Right. And my husband's a Taurus, but he doesn't act like a traditional Taurus. My okay. best friend. Yes. My husband, absolutely not. You would not know. You would okay. have no idea. And he's in, like, he's, he's a true Taurus. He's in the yeah. month of yeah. what? Um, May, May. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Today. Oh, today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Today, yeah, yeah. Today. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. But, okay. It's just, it's interesting because, like, my friends always used to say, you know, I don't really know what job title you have. Like, I don't really know because I've worked in community services. So the right. passion has always been to support people. Right. I want to help people. I want yeah. to support them on their journey. And yeah. it's like, I'm going to do my journey, but I want to support people. Yeah. And so it's just interesting because I think I have to take ownership of this. I have to take ownership that. of the fact that you're not going to find me doing one thing. And yeah. that's just me. Just and even though are. it's hard for people to grasp, I just have to accept that for myself. But because I, I used to really sit like, how am I going to help people How if they don't really know what I... And the, and the question would bother me to the point where it would paralyze me from taking the actions I need to take. Yeah. Whereas now I'm just like, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I don't think it matters is. that um, how people grasp it. It's mm-hmm. more about that you grasp it, mm-hmm. right? Because it actually starts with you, yeah. right? And so in order for you to be in your true purpose and for you to feel good about what you're doing, mm-hmm. you have to live your truth, right? Absolutely. But yeah. because you're, so from the perspective of a business person, and mm-hmm. this is the, this is where the mindset shifts happen because mm-hmm. from a business perspective, you have to be clear on what you're offering and what yeah. you're doing. But when you're offering two things and you're trying to do that, I have to be clear. You now put yourself in the mind of a customer. Yes. So then the thought process of a customer of like, oh, but there's confusion there. That still plays a role on impacting how you start viewing things because that confusion of it, it's such a weird. The mind is, is crazy. It's a crazy dynamic yeah. because you're impacting this thought, which impacts this other thought, which then impacts. So it's like a back and forth. Yeah. And so I'm thinking as a customer. And now I'm questioning myself as the coach and the makeup artist. Right. So it's like, I need to take ownership of it. Yes. But I also can't think so much like a customer that I start hindering myself from owning that Mm -hmm. I can do two things at once. Absolutely. And it will work out. But no, this is why I separated TikTok and Instagram to do the makeup stuff on TikTok and do the life guidance here but tiktok's so open and that's what i love about it tiktok is so welcoming you can you can totally be multi-dimensional on tiktok one of the best app creations it truly is it's it's my favorite app yeah 100 yeah i i think tiktok in the night is when you watch it i consume in the evening tiktok in the morning i don't know what you're doing out there you know something come (laughs) your energy's off tiktok in the morning no I try to open you once in a while in the morning, and your content is a little it's different. Not the same. 
No, real talk. It gets. It I don't gets know live what it is, and, and maybe it's just my algorithm. In the morning, it's just not for me. No, I agree. With Does you. not speak yeah. to me, but in no. the nighttime, yeah. And it's interesting too because I'm like, I'm in a weird position. I'm owning changes. Like I'm really I like love this. going with all the transition, going with everything that comes with it. And I'm like, yeah. hey, you know what? Why don't I look at meetups as a platform to use more mm-hmm. to support my business and yeah. also to support the community building? Yeah. Why don't I look at Reddit as an option? To Ooh, I like use, that. You know what I'm? You know, like, I'm, I'm actually going to look at Twitch. And I don't know how to use Twitch. But Girl, I'm like, why listen, don't I look at Twitch? So I am like, like, I need to start live streaming from Twitch. Yeah. The, I see my son. I was like twisting his locks the other day. And he's watching, what's his name? Kai Sinet. Kai Sinet. Kai Sinet's hilarious. And I now I, I start watching him every now and then. Cause I'm, like, I'm not watching sick, him. But I'm not on Twitch yeah, to watch. Yeah. I watch him on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where we were watching. Yeah, yeah. We were watching on YouTube. Yeah. But we, the, one, the episode that we were watching... He was just trying on clothes. And I was like, I could do this. I can I <laughs> Millennials can legit- are sitting back like, wait a minute. They're just doing that? That yeah, I can do I that? Can, this, what? <laughs> just talk shit to the camera? Yeah, what? absolutely. Oh, listen, the whole time I yeah. was setting up in here, I just put my other camera up and just stream live on Twitch. Why not? Right? And just, what? we're about to do a live podcast. And I started searching. Um, we can literally put ourselves in these different spaces. Yes. And yes. I love that we are becoming who we truly want to become. Mm-hmm. I'm also in a transitional period of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, just even having the studio. Yeah. Right. But even yes. you talking about three different things or talking about two different things. Mm-hmm. I have the other business. I've known you. T- <gasps> yeah. You're very similar just, in that. Just sense. Yeah. all over the place. Just yeah. all over. The- but I think we got kind of got stuck into society's way of thinking that we're supposed to do one thing. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have a nine to five. Mm -hmm. If you start a business. Okay. Unless you, someone sees your business on and popping, you got a hobby. Yeah. Right. But, but, but that's actually not what it is behind the scenes. Yeah. Right. And then I actually spoke to someone yesterday and they said that they shut down their business as Mm -hmm. well. And I was like, damn, yeah like damn yeah. so <laughs> a little bit of disappointment not for why they're making their changes but like if you really want to do something and I, if i want to do something with someone just go freaking do it because the time while we're sitting there going back and forth with our mind as yeah. you're saying because the mind will play tricky games with you yes, if, you're, if your mindset is not yeah I didn't even know mindset was so important. Like I've always journaled, Mm -hmm. but I did not know mindset was so important. And then I got into this, um, I joined this coaching group Mm -hmm. and the coach um, started really having us read books about the power of your mindset Mm -hmm. and shifting your mindset and all of that. And it just makes a difference for you to get past or to push through your fear or to to truly make a decision, yeah. but to execute yes. on it. Yeah. So I think it's fabulous. I think it's great that you're ready to transition. You've already yeah. started because you're coming yeah. up on my feet. I've never seen you on my feet before. Thanks. That's <laughs> I, I wasn't seeing you on my feet. It's working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's working. Um, and and I'm just talking TikTok, mm-hmm. right? I don't know what's going on on Instagram. Plus, Instagram for some reason gives me a little social anxiety. I agree with you. I th- <laughs> like I think about this all. I yeah. think about this because yeah. I'm like, something's still not like I trust myself so much. I love when that. When I feel like something's not sitting right with me when it comes to Instagram, as much as like I have a lot of people there, I connect with a lot of people, but something is still like this feels like a story someone else wrote. And I'm trying to fit myself in this story somebody else is writing. But who's it writing doesn't... it? Because everybody's having the same sentiments. Absolutely. Well, I don't think. Well, it's not everybody, because some people really love Instagram. Some people really do, and I think yeah. Instagram has re- has ways of being really dynamic for people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also feel like it just depends on you as a person, like what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I, I'm I contemplate like just maybe I should just slow down on Instagram focus mm-hmm. because it doesn't work as well as i would like it to Mm -hmm. and it's like well you could you have to make your content like this but it's like but that content does not work for what i'm trying to do and i can try i will try i'm still like i'm still in the phase of like i'll keep trying and if after so long i don't feel like it's 
doing what I needed to do, then mm. I don't mind shifting my resources to other places. Yeah. So this is my exploratory phase. Yeah. In this transition, I get to explore and get to learn. And I am really blessed to have this freedom. You are embracing all of this because you can identify yeah. that in this phase. Yeah. That that is you talk no, like that's that is Very presence, nice. yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, true. some people won't even see it, but you that's are like true. in this phase, I'm giving myself permission mm -hmm. and I will enjoy all of this and I will explore it. Yeah. And once I identify what works and what doesn't work, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, this no, is this real, is my interpretation like, of what absolutely. you're saying. So yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like then you can push forward on and I will thrive yes. over here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So no, absolutely. And so I'm like, it's, it's fine. Like, just, you got to keep going with it. Yeah. And like, this is the flow I tried to stop before. So now I have to really go with this flow. Yeah. Committing to the flow isn't easy work. It's just, it's just what you decide to do when you know, like, there's a deeper meaning to, to all of this. Right. And like you said, mindset, but I'm also like, it's so much, it's, it, it is mindset, but it is your spirit and it is yes. your actions. You said you have to execute. And I noticed that this is why I also wanted to do the life guidance because we focus on the mind and the body so much, mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, it's hunger. Yeah. Um, but well, that was your tummy? That was my tummy. <laughs> I thought that was upstairs. <laughs> no, you know, I just had an apple. I was just like. You didn't even eat any vegan stuff think, before you came. About yeah. it. I didn't think about it. But um, I was going to say it's such a mindset. It's beyond mindset and yeah. thing because it's like. Well, your spirit at the end of the day is going to tell you something. It's going to drive on, you. And it has to be, there needs to be alignment. So it's yes. like we're walking around very misaligned because our mind has more control than it's ever had. Mm -hmm. But it's like our mind also can talk us into every single thing mm -hmm. we think about. Yeah. And so it's like from a spiritual perspective, it's like what is the deep knowing that I have about my reality? Is it that people need support in this stage of life right now? Yeah. And it's a yes for me. Yeah. Is it like I've thought about, oh, maybe I should just focus on doing tech and da, da, da. These are great ideas, but they're not aligned necessarily with what that meaning is. But yes. eventually I might bring those elements in. Into it. But yeah. it has to also still align with that deeper meaning and that knowledge that I carry. So yeah. it's just, yeah, this will help me the, the deeper meaning, the spirit, the knowledge. That's what brings out enough information to then allow my mind to do the other parts of things. It, it also yeah. tells me that you're truly um, connected with yourself mm -hmm. because, um, you know, it is about your spirit and what you're feeling and your mm -hmm. spirit will guide you. Yeah. But Every you need time. to be into yeah. that. Yes. Right. So that you can hear yourself so you can remember your greatness so you can live the life that you were supposed to live or you're, yeah. you're, what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Right. So, so just so we make sure it's clear, what is the name of the new business? The life guide. Okay. The life guide.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, not the life guide. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. The sites. Up, the, Girl. Yeah. Okay. I did not know the that. I got to go look guide. for the site. H E E. Okay. Life guide.com. Okay. So we'll, yeah. we'll put that in the show notes and do we have a new, yeah, yeah. My grin, daughter. girl, grin. <laughs> okay. Do we have um, a new Instagram account? what not you want to do are you going to try to just flip no, over I'm, well no not with east end vegan oh okay, no okay. i'm leaving east end vegan as all it these is. vegan people so will be like well, i could have sworn that they this can was keep this yeah. as is but oh. no i do it through my personal page so melon okay. online um okay. and i'm just doing that because i was already putting videos out there that okay. is like messages that i want people to see okay. and i always looked at instagram as a history of my story yeah so like i don't i'm not huge on deleting pictures or anything like that yeah you i want you to see the journey if you decide to scroll down go yeah. look and see what's been going on in my life <laughs> yeah yeah so that's why i'm like okay wait what's your name on instagram melon online oh Underscore. did you just start following me I just saw your name. I know I followed you on Perspective. East End, no, but... Melon Online. Oh, mate, did you send me a message today? No. Anyhow, I got Not a message. there. I, I just seen Melon Online. Someone hacking me? It was not <laughs> you messaging me. I just seen Melon Online mm -hmm. either message me or some Right here. You sent me a message. message. Is this you? Yeah. Um. Oh, because I um tagged you. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, okay. The, like, I'm like, footage. I seen it and I was like, who's that? Yeah, so. Wait, it doesn't even look like you. That's an old picture from my birthday three years ago that I've okay. been needing to update and uh, I was like, that, I was trying, I, I looked know, at, were you um, in the studio when you did this? Or were you outside? I was in a car. 
Oh. Yeah, and I did this. Okay. <laughs> just like, okay. I'm like, I don't think you were here. I remember I was over there, mm -hmm. and I seen that come in, and I just looked at the picture like, I don't know. Oh, maybe that's person. somebody I met on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been going out lately, so maybe that's somebody that's I met hilarious. on the weekend. Yeah. No, it's me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. It's totally okay. distracted you. So we got the business name. We got an Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll definitely throw up the website and yes. make sure I get your. And we can always do this again and chat more. We will. We'll so do this much. once you're like. There's so. Once you're things. in in there. Once yeah. you're in there. So you're selling East End Vegan. Mm -hmm. That's to start. Yes. How have you settled with that internally? Uh, um. <laughs> your your baby <laughs> before your like, baby. Yeah, I know. Um. I think because it's taken so long to get to this point yeah. that I'm just like, okay. So when I finally said, I'm going to close East End Vegan this year, probably in January, like final, final. Of this year? Yeah. I, like finalize, like it yeah. is closing for me. I was like, oh, why do I feel relieved? You actually said it in December because I reached maybe, out to yeah. you. Okay, so maybe to, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah, so I reached I out to you to do a market for, for my yes. old workplace. And I felt relief. Like, oh, wow. Genuine relief. Yeah, it was and time. So, yeah, so even when I had Phoenix, there was a time period where I was like, I don't think I want to go back. Like, yeah. it was madly for real. Like, I'm like, I don't want to go back to work. So <laughs> just, it was that from then that these feelings were marinating. And then I was like, food is cool, but it's not my passion. And so, again, like. With the that, food you analogies. Need to know, you need to know, right? <laughs> food is delicious. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not my passion. I can make things. And I can do things well, but I can do that somewhere else. And I think yeah. it's just it's just time. And so my last market, I started getting like I started tearing up when I was talking to a few of the vendors. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, it is bittersweet because I am letting go of this this creation. Yeah. But I also like I'll probably cry it out at home at some point. I really got to give that grieving process. It's it's, it's time. It's yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. Just then it's like go it's, time. It's time to let it go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a coach? I don't actually. Okay. I have a men I have two mentors. I have okay. a spiritual mentor and then yeah. I have a mentor from like I just my life mentor. Yeah. So she doesn't necessarily coach, but yeah. like she's always been that person that I can bounce these ideas off. Yeah. And I also say I have a pretty good support system. So my dad also my dad and Sheldon, yeah. they play a really good role in helping me clarify what I'm trying to do. First of all, I love yeah to hear a black woman say that her father is yeah. that impactful yeah yeah he, and you just mentioned the men in your life yeah. like <laughs> most you, i i mean it's kind of sad to say for some people i haven't actually heard that that much like yes. it's my father yes. who's been yeah. instrumental in help you just said your father and your husband mm -hmm. yeah no i'm i'm very you know what the other thing too is i think about it like well, wow, Mel, you've had some pretty decent examples of what men are supposed to be, what they look like, and also what it looks like when a man allows a woman to be themselves. Love it. You know, so it's like I, I found it in Sheldon. Yeah. My dad, he's had his mistakes. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I've always been an observant person. I've always understood things differently. So it's yeah. like I recognize your mistakes, but I also recognize that like where you have your issues that you need to deal with. Hence why some of these mistakes exist. Yeah. But also, like, I look at my mom as my mom. Like, she's yeah. she's my mother and she's a creative. My dad, yeah. he's a logical person. Yeah. But it's over time, balance. he's I've seen his spiritual journey and I've noticed how he's changed. And so that's why he can mentor me in certain ways. Yeah. Whereas my mom, she's just a hustler. So yeah. it's like she might give me a push like, you just got to do that. You just got to do that. But. It's still my dad who I think really gives that clarity. That okay, I need. and here I'm going to be all mm -hmm. spiritual. What's your father's name? <laughs> <laughs> my father is a. Uh, I don't know. When's his birthday? To it. Um, November eighteenth or nineteenth. So is he's he a Scorpio or Scor No, he's not a Scorpio. I don't think. I oh think well, is it Sagittarius? No, because I think that starts in December. I don't know, but yeah. I think it's a Scorpio. Yeah, the eighteenth. Oh, okay. No, it's I'm okay. Sorry, We're wrapping up. No, no, I'm no. Sorry. This was great. This was but great. Yeah. Yeah. Any last parting words for business owners going through transitions, even life trend? Because your business yes. is a big part of your life. Yeah. Right. It's but, huge. It's but really it sounds like you have a lot of peace. Say, yeah, I have a lot of peace because mm -hmm. 
again, I recognize like mm-hmm. something is off. Something is telling me this is yeah. it's time for change. Um, and I don't see, uh, like I can see a vision for East End Vegan, mm-hmm. but I don't see myself in that vision. Like yeah. I don't see the big picture with myself in it. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, wh- what would like- you, parting words or recommendations for a business owner that might be considering either making a huge transition um, to close down something and start something new um, or just a transition? Yeah. I'm a firm believer that you have to look at your feelings and assess your happiness with where you're at. Um, we can all have great visions for our business, mm-hmm. but if it's not sitting within you as something that you want to keep going on with, you have to be real with yourself and think of the possibilities, which is what else could I possibly do? <laughs> what else do I really love? What yeah. else do I really like? And if you can vision a possibility with that a feasible one at that then start considering it's time to close down the business that you're currently in you have to look at what's possible for you and you also have to look at does it align with your desires anymore does this business fill me up with happiness and joy does this business and it's going to be hard days but overall when I look at years am I going to look at this as like (sighs) or are you going to look at it with like wow that was look what I just did yeah. And when you're done closing it, you yeah. will be able to look at it as that was amazing Yeah, because you did do that work. But when you're in it, you also have to recognize like it really isn't filling me. So I'm sighing. I'm sighing because this isn't working. Yeah. And yeah. I like to look at it like I've literally reinvented myself yeah. multiple times. So we, it's we're okay. supposed to. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be, your life does not need to be linear. Life is about change. Yeah. Like that's really the most is. natural thing for us, but yeah. we try to run away from it. Yeah. Thank you so much for this conversation, Mel. I know you got to head yeah, on I out. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But this was a great yeah, conversation. We, we can talk anytime. We, oh, I would love you to come back <laughs> in the studio yes. and like, Take that change, people. Do something new. Take the take the leap. Things take really leap, do work yeah. out when you take the leap. Yeah. Especially people know when they're not aligned with something. Yeah. And there's it's not just about being in tune. Yeah. People do know. Yeah. It's a matter of don't let your mind talk you out of your knowing. You need to trust yourself a lot more. Trust yourself. We'll end yeah. on trust yourself. Yeah. Thank you, you so go. much again, Mel. And we'll drop all your links and everything yes, below thank for you everyone. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this absolutely. So woo, woo. And congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations yeah. to you too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank I've you. Seen the later part of your journey. So, yeah. but it's nice to watch. Yeah. And and yeah. you know what? It's it's fun. Yeah. It is fun. Right? <laughs> it's so much fun. It's fun. I'm so happy. Yeah. Whereas I was just in corporate for the last 20 years in tech yeah. all these people are trying to be a black girl in tech yeah and i'm like one foot out a black girl in tech <laughs> yeah <laughs> been that black girl in tech yeah 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 Yeah. now i'm that creative girl in tech yeah. uh, creative girl and i mean there's a little and you technology know how to bring your tech in absolutely yeah, yeah. If now it's about That's merging it's merging the boat the, the, the two worlds merging tech with our world yeah not in a okay here's a new thing here's a new no, yeah merging that merging it so yeah. it works together so. yeah absolutely anyway. all right go out there and be great people Mel, I'm going to hug it out with you, girl. (laughs) Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you.